Hey guys and welcome back to another video on Super Kai Guy channel. I'm back with another review and this time I'm checking out this Rissalar SR612 dual dash cam. I wanted to check out a more affordable camera and see if it's as good as the more expensive options, especially when it comes to footage quality. This camera has very promising specs so let's see if it lives up to them. There is not that much on the box but you can clearly see that it's going to be a 4K uh, front camera and it actually includes the rear camera as well, which is going to be 2k or 1440p or somewhere close to it So let's open it up and see what we get All right, so here on the left I think we have the main camera and we have a big box of stuff first of course we get the user manual uh, Looks pretty decent. Uh, I don't think there's that much to go into of course you can you know look at the status lights and what the buttons do and how to route your wires uh, a little bit of information like that. It does show you that the rear camera is IP68 waterproof. So that's pretty cool. Shows you how to configure it as well. And of course there is an app for this one because it is a Wi-Fi camera. Uh, next we have uh, the wire that goes for the rear camera. And here's the rear camera itself. So it has one of these uh, wires that uh, breaks up into a connection so you can you know, uh, put it through your trunk uh, lid and stuff like that. Uh, this is because it's a waterproof camera, so it's designed to either go outside of the vehicle, so where your license plate is, or you can use the double-sided tape and mount it on the inside of your window, which I think is what I'm gonna do. But it's pretty cool that it splits up just like that. You know, makes it easier to get into tighter spots. You also have your power adapter, which also includes a two amp USB charger. So that's pretty nice. A mini USB that plugs into the camera and looks like our GPS probably plugs into this. We'll see that in a minute. And here is the GPS module itself. There are a lot of components to this. And of course you don't have to install all of them, but if you want all of the functionality, you will have to. And it uses a suction cup for the front mount camera that locks in place. So it should be very easy to move around and mount in a different spot if you like to. And of course the main camera itself. So here it is, 4K. I'm gonna take off the little protector. The lens looks good. Of course, we'll see what the quality is once we mount it and start using it. Looking here at the top, you can see the type C connector. That's gonna be for your rear camera. The mini USB one's gonna be for the power adapter, as I mentioned, and the GPS. As you can see, there is no connection for the GPS, so you have to use the original adapter that it comes with. We have the power button, a micro SD card slot, which does not come with the device, so you're gonna have to provide your own. Nothing on this side, and a few buttons here at the bottom. So I think this is gonna be the microphone and menu up, down, and OK button. This is actually the reset button and the microphones here on the side. All right, very cool. Let's power it on and see if there's any kind of setup. Oh, and I forgot to mention that it does come with a trim removal tool. All right, so it looks like the camera actually came pre-charged. So this is not a touch screen and that's kind of where the cost saving comes in. You know, they put a lot of money into the sensor, but maybe not put a touch screen in and stuff like that. Let's go to the menu and see what options we have in here. So we have the record settings, we have the resolution, very easy to use. So you can do 4K plus 2K, which is at 30 frames per second. That's exactly what I'm going to keep. Uh, loop recording, yes, I'm gonna switch it to one minute. I think it's a little bit safer uh, in case something happens. Dual camera, yes, front and rear. Record audio, yes, we're gonna record that date stamp. Of course, we wanna keep that. G sensor, I'm gonna put it on low because I know these usually get pretty sensitive and uh, you'll get a lot of uh, unwanted data basically or video saved that's not being uh, recorded over. We have the mirror switch, so you can uh, change the way the camera points up or down. We'll see once we mount the camera if that makes any sense. Uh, system settings, so we have the screen saver. Yep, we want to do that after 30 seconds so it doesn't distract you while you're driving at night. Time display, we'll keep that on. Uh, Wi-Fi, I will connect that to my phone in a minute to see if there's anything special. I believe that's just for getting your footage off and changing the settings like we're doing here. So not that much but i'll include that uh, once i connect date and time so actually that is accurate beep sounds already turned off so that's great and parking monitor if you were to have it uh, hardwired in you can enable it and it will uh, do a time lapse as the car is parked 
uh, time lapse record, so you can enable that manually. But that will that will make uh, the camera not record the regular footage. So I would not recommend that unless you're just you know being artistic or going on a on a trip somewhere. Frequency is 50 or 60, so I'm in the 60 hertz zone. And format the card and reset to the default settings. All right, I think that's a very comprehensive menu. There's not that much to it, but it gives you everything you you would need. And of course we can go to the folders directly and see the footage that was recorded once we have some footage let me connect to wi-fi see if there's anything special put an sd card in install it in a car and we'll take a look at how well it records i briefly tested the app as well it has live view and you can adjust the same settings as in the menu on the camera so let's see how easy it is to mount the actual camera it comes with a suction cup most of the other ones I've installed had um, like double-sided tape, but I like this uh, setup because you can always change it to whatever you want, like to whatever location you would like. I think I'm gonna put it right here behind the mirror so it's not distracting and it, right below these uh, black uh, markers, whatever this is, I'm not really sure. So I'm just gonna put it like that, lock it. Now I'm gonna loosen this part. I think that's gonna be right about perfect right there. Lock it in, and I think we are good. And now I can plug in the power wire. Now I'm gonna plug in the wire for the rear camera and route it the same way I had the other wires. It is getting a little bit crowded up here in the, uh, behind the trim pieces, because you have the GPS wire you have the rear camera wire and the power wire and it's all kind of all in the same spot. So I would maybe, you know, if it was up to me, I would maybe consolidate some of those wires or move them somewhere else so they're not all stuck in this location. It's doable. I'm using the little clips, but uh, a little bit fiddly. The rest of the wires were very easily routed as they aren't very thick, but luckily well insulated. I did not get any interference with key fobs while the camera is powered on. This is going to be the place where I'm going to put most of my extra wire. I just need enough to the tailgate. And there's plenty of space here. There is no airbags or anything like that. All right, so I'm just going through the grommet inside there. So here's how I wired the rear camera. It's just attached with a double-sided tape to the panel here, looking out of the window. The wire goes inside behind this panel, comes out on that side, just right there, goes through a grommet over there. All the extra wire is hidden behind this uh, C-pillar or D-pillar, whatever it's called in the back here. And then all the wires just run all the way to the front over there and connected to the camera just right there. That's it, that's the whole install. With the front and rear cameras installed and configured, it was time to go for a drive. We are now looking at a front camera footage during a cloudy day. As you can see, the Sony Starvis sensor is doing a great job capturing clear and useful footage. This camera also has a 170 degree viewing angle, so it captures the entire width of the car and a good portion of the road. Details in the video are also impressive for a camera that does not have hardware image stabilization, but it more than compensates for that with wide dynamic range or WDR and HDR, which is high dynamic range. You can see details in both cars passing by as well as the brighter areas of the video. Switching to the rear camera, as you can see, I have not mounted it properly inside the vehicle as there is a line in the view but it still has managed to do a great job recording usable footage, even behind tinted glass. Granted, it was not all my fault as this camera was realistically designed and made to be mounted outside the vehicle as it has two little screws for mounting and it's made to be waterproof. No doubt you would get much better video quality with the camera mounted on the outside. Switching to the night footage, we can again see HDR doing a great job on this camera, capturing as much light as possible and giving us a usable result. The rear camera did not hold up as well at night and most of my footage was blurry for some reason. So is this $100 dual dash cam worth buying? Well, it makes great video during the day and very acceptable videos at night. 
It comes with Wi-Fi and GPS, has a waterproof rear camera and a G-Sensor parking monitor, but I wish the wires were a little bit easier to organize when installing the camera and I wish the app was slightly more reliable as I had it not connect to the camera a couple of times. Overall, this is a great value for the money camera as the footage is almost as good as the $400 cameras I have tested in the past for a quarter of the price. That's all I have for you guys today. Let me know what you think of this Rissolar CR612 camera in the comments down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.